What career seems to attract an unlikely amount of idiots, despite of being intellectually demanding? If you don't work for a major school district in a region, congrats, you get to take anyone who applies and can meet minimally acceptable standards. My dad worked as a teacher and then administrator an hour or so out of town in the everyone here is associated with one of the schools or can't afford to move districts, and holy fuck, the teachers he had to hire. And in some cases, couldn't get rid of, because small community school boards are, uh, nepotistic, to put it lightly. The largest school district in the city has, this was eight years ago when I last got an update, a wait list of 60,000 teaching applicants. Districts an hour south were begging people who had even an emergency teaching certificate, because they had vacant positions and needed warm bodies. That's the crazy thing, the first district I worked for was a pretty well-known district in my area and was pretty well staffed. In the state we had a great reputation, and we got more well-off families from all over the world that moved to this district in order to get their kid into our program still a public school. The problem was that the way their program was designed, the one-to-one -one staff did pretty much all the work and the teacher in the room was more like the secretary. But while the teacher was very well paid, the support staff was not only not well paid when I started there it was $15 slash HR but surrounding districts paid $18 to $20, but also did not get full time and no benefits, even though it was a heavily physical slash behavioral district my new district offers all support staff benefits. So basically people left so quickly that they just needed to hire from anywhere. My significant other is a choir teacher and this year her music department received a lot of funding from a donation. The music department made a list of things they need. The school admins completely ignored their list and bought a ton of new music stands and smart boards for the band and choir rooms. Now they still don't have the equipment they need, but they have so many music stands they had to put all of their old stands in storage. Edit. I'm 100% this is just incompetence or arrogance. I imagine the admins think they know better than a couple of teachers. I'm about 85% sure my boss is doing this as well. He is the director of the HVAC department, I am the shop number 2 and shop steward. Basically his right hand guy. I also run the controls department within the HVAC department. We sub out a lot of installs because we don't have the manpower. There is this one company we used who was excellent. But my boss kicked them out because one job took three extra days to finish, and one employee of the contractor showed up high to a school for work. The company's install manager fired him that day and the company formally apologized but was kicked out anyways. The company who took their spot fucks up left and right, I am talking every single job. Super sloppy, compressors blow up after 5 days from units being massively overcharged, marking jobs done that they never did. Just egregious. He actively defends them and uses them for stuff even us union shop guys could do. They charge 3 to 4 times more than previous company for the same scope of work. I firmly believe he is getting kickbacks. Okay former Title I public school teacher here, will be real, didn't even make it a year and it was because of this bullshit that I didn't want to be complicit in, let me explain. Lots of states have some kind of tracking for underperforming students. This is usually determined by state tests but can also be determined by a school district for the purposes of receiving different sources of funding. Students who get labeled as underperforming in a Title I district means that if they perform above expectations, you get extra financial bonuses. There's also a payment per student from the state and slash or federal government for Title I schools. 
I remember sitting in a PD where the admin was only half joking about just making sure all the kids bombed the beginning of year district assessments so that when they showed growth at the end of the year, we'd get more funding. This also meant that teachers got bigger stipends, anywhere from $3K $32K a year. I was so disgusted that this was encouraged, while not making enough base salary from the district itself, by the way, that it's actually one of the reasons I quit. I used to work at a financial firm helping financial advisors manage their clients' accounts and oh my god some of them should not be allowed to handle other people's finances. There was one advisor who wanted to apply to trade options on some accounts even though he didn't even know the basics of options and no matter how many times it was explained to him he just didn't understand. He wanted to apply for the highest level of options, that could seriously screw up someone's finances if done improperly. We did not approve him. Another advisor couldn't figure out how to print a form from our website. He called us for help insisting it was a problem on our end. Turns out he didn't have the printer plugged in and then it didn't even have ink, we asked him after exhausting all other options because we gave him the benefit of the doubt that he would have already checked. Another advisor, while super nice, couldn't figure out how to attach a file to an email and I had to walk him through creating bookmarks to important pages on our site. I'm sure back in the day he may have been great but in this day and age where so much is done online and paper forms and documents are so much more susceptible to fraud you just can't be computer illiterate. Another advisor kept getting mad at us even though he kept bringing in the client into his office, filling out the form wrong and having them sign it, and then sending it to us in a state we could not accept it. He was told several times what options on the form needed to be selected to do what they wanted and instead of realizing he was doing something wrong he just went off on us. But like, Without the client's signature on a proper form we legally couldn't do what he wanted lol basic reading comprehension would have solved his problem. Both my sister and mom are nurses. Both describe it as toxic. My mom was a healthcare assistant and used to get bullied by nurses at the hospital she worked at. The thought of my 55 years old mom being bullied by 30 and 40 year olds because of her weight used to really upset me. She moved to a different hospital closer to where they live. She loves it there. Due to the insecurities about her weight she started cycling for fitness. Seven years later she recently cycled 66 kilometers along the coast of Ireland. Everybody is proud of her. My ex of six years went through nursing school and started her career while we were together and my god did it change my opinion of nurses. Her peers were about 40% decent people trying to help others and 60% the absolute worst control freaks and narcissists I've ever seen in a professional setting. And that same portion acted like they were doctors with some vast medical knowledge. So when there are a herd of crazy nurses turning anti-vax I'm not surprised in the least. Seeing the curriculum firsthand, nurses don't really learn a whole lot of medicine. They're much more about safety, process, and how to respond to situations with a tiny bit of pharmacology mixed in. So anytime a nurse starts making strong medical claims I tend to get suspicious. One time during a night out a girl collapsed from being too drunk or high or something. She was breathing and had a pulse, but was unresponsive. My friends and I were like 10 feet away so we turned her on her side and called 9 to 11. Some girl comes screaming at us that we need to be doing CPR. We told her that the unconscious girl was breathing and had a pulse, you're not supposed to do CPR unless their heart stops. The screaming girl then started screaming even louder I'm a nurse I know better than some assholes. And tried to fight through us to give unnecessary CPR to the poor girl. She even tried to correct the paramedics when they arrived. Some nurses really think they're God's gift to medicine. 
With mental health nursing in particular, there's the unfortunate effect whereby compassionate caring people get so emotionally drained and burned out by the work that they leave the profession, meaning a disproportionate amount of those left over are the kind that either never did or have just stopped connecting with patients as human beings which can result in vulnerable patients being further traumatized by their time in care. Honestly, the ones who still care and keep their compassion are saints for doing such a hard job and absolutely deserve to be paid more for doing it. Still covered by Kaiser, I went to the urgent care again some months later, which was so large it was split into two semi-autonomous units. The receptionist asked if I wanted to go to Dr. So and So's side or Nurse Ratchet, to which I blurted out no. The receptionist's expression told me this was common. The boss paying for Kaiser had a heart attack and was in the hospital for a few days. He said the nurses greeted him the first morning with, we didn't think you were going to make it through the night. I got the distinct impression they reached a point in his blood thinner maintenance where they decided he was too expensive. Long story short, he ended up with a stroke which I correctly diagnosed over the phone when I found his smashed car at the shop one weekend and called his house, the staff at Kaiser collectively took like three inpatient days to conclude the same. Quick story. I used to work at a hospital and was part of a team that helped bariatric patients. Every now and then we would get a call about a patient death and would be charged with transporting the body to the morgue. We get a call and it is a larger person, very flabby. As we are waiting for the nurse to enter the room to assist, one of my teammates was casually just bumping his knee against the bed. This was causing the body to jiggle a bit. The nurse comes in and see movement and screams the patient is still alive. And then runs out of the room to get more help. We were just dumbfounded and couldn't hold in our laughter when the charge nurse came running in. That nurse was scary dumb. Wasn't the last stupid thing she ever did. She ended up quitting nursing as she had quit teaching prior to that. Feel sorry for whatever career she is in now. That's an easy one. Lots of gamers go on to school to become game devs, but lots of gamers are idiots. It's the same problem with new restaurant owners, people spend their entire lives going to restaurants as the customers and always experience the relaxed stress-free atmosphere that comes with being served food, but never see the extreme level of labor and stress that goes into actually running a restaurant. Gamers always play games but will never ever understand the insane level of complexity of AAA games development, the dozens of departments all communicating, so goodbye all those antisocial redditor types, the breakneck deadlines, the labor-intensive debugging, the monumental scale of making a game from scratch if it's a new IP, with the way gamers talk about game devs you think half the stuff just pops in out of thin air. And then gamers have the gall to act like adding new content to a game is a simple task and that devs are just lazy or incompetent. I've seen some insane expectations over the decade I've been in online communities, simple stiff like thinking making a new character skin only takes a few hours of work because it's just art. Sorry for the rant but gamers frustrates me. Gamers always play games but will never ever understand the insane level of complexity of AAA games development, the dozens of departments all communicating, so goodbye all those antisocial redditor types, the breakneck deadlines, the labor-intensive debugging, the monumental scale of making a game from scratch if it's a new IP, with the way gamers talk about game devs you think half the stuff just pops in out of thin air. And then gamers have the gall to act like adding new content to a game is a simple task and that devs are just lazy or incompetent. I've seen some insane expectations over the decade I've been in online communities, simple stiff like thinking making a new character skin only takes a few hours of work because it's just art. Sorry for the rant but gamers frustrates me. You fool, I've made a platformer in scratch, slash s if it's not obvious.
If you are someone who wants to be a game designer, consider trying to be a dungeon master and run a mini campaign with your friends, just to see. You'll realize quickly that making a story, quests, NPCs, a world, factions, environments, loot, monsters, a main bad guy, etc. Any one of these things is really hard to do well on their own. And being a DM is just for your buddies who come over to play some D&D. Imagine doing that but your audience is now any gamer who might be interested. Of course, you would specialize in one role, maybe dabble in others, if you try to join a big company. But it's a fine exercise nonetheless as it exposes you to a ton of different roles. I took some business classes when I was in engineering school. Figured it would come in handy. Boy was that an eye-opener. You'd be working alongside people who couldn't understand the basic algebraic equations that tell you profit slash loss or cost of goods sold and so forth. Math just wasn't their thing. And you'd want to take them by the shoulders and shake them awake, like, hey dumbass, money is a numbers game. If you want to be good with money you'd better get good with numbers. No clue. Can't understand a simple equation and they're gonna hope Excel will bail them out when the time comes. But they suck at Excel too. Step 1, meetings, step 3 get rich. Just amazingly dumb people. While I've had some great teachers, some were absolute trash. I had a teacher who once taught a cap extension course, which was essentially volunteering for the community. I can't remember fully, but I think in order to be considered for the class, you had to have a certain GPA. Regardless, the class consisted of all students with decent grades. We all had a giant group term project that we had to initially present to the class. In total, there were six groups to present over a class and half. When it came time to present, our teacher who I'll call Ms. Erin, said we would be grading our fellow classmates and their presentations. The first group was about to go up when she added in the fun little fact that we can only give one group ten tenths, one group nine tenths, and so on. Ms. Aaron started threatening people with zeros if no one went up, which only caused further havoc. For the rest of the class, we just sat there all screaming at her while she screamed back at us, it was freaking mayhem. Obviously nothing was resolved as class ended, so we all just packed up our stuff and continued to talk about it for the rest of the day. The following morning, back we went to class and instead of seeing Ms. Aaron, we saw the teacher who started the class, Ms. Garfunkel. Ms. Garfunkel started to lay into us about respecting our teachers and Ms. Aaron is simply following the course outline, so if we don't like what is happening, we should see her and we shouldn't attack Ms. Aaron. I had something similar happen, back when I was at uni, we had a class where the teacher was an older man named Ray, if anyone had missed a single lesson during the term he would dock half your grade, so the highest you could get was 50%, he told us this in the first class but we all laughed and thought he was joking. You needed 40% to pass the class at the lowest grade, so when everyone got their grades back after the final assignment about 90% of the class including me failed. Shit hit the fan and everyone complained about him, the assignments were regraded and the teacher was fired a few days later. Turns out he had worked there for many years and had pulled similar shit like this for years but only this year he introduced a much larger penalty than he ever did before. Apparently before he would do shit like doc 5 or 10% here or there on assignments for minor stuff like spelling mistakes, wrong reference style or arriving late to classes. This grumpy man looked to be in his 60s so god know how many people he fucked over in all the time he was there. This was minor in comparison, but it had to do with a science teacher in high school. Near the start of the year we had a project. 
we were supposed to do a poster on some science and technology thing that interested us. I was a big space nerd, so I did one on the Saturn V rocket. I didn't just do a poster, I actually made a model of it from cardboard tubes and suspended it from the poster in a kind of 3D pop-out. She gave me a perfect score because, well, I had put effort in where basically nobody else had. Near the end of the year, we got another poster project. We were supposed to use it to do a presentation, with us drawing topics out of a hat. I drew solar power, so I went all in, I went way outside the specs, and made a model of a solar power station, the molten salt type, with all the mirrors around it. I still remember that much, along with all the information and articles I could find in an informational diorama. She marked me much lower. I asked why, figuring it was because technically I was supposed to make a poster, and had gone outside the rules in my enthusiasm. Her answer? Well, I gave you a perfect score last time. If I did it again this time, it wouldn't be fair to the other students. Thank <laughs> you.